Rocky. On Joy. You may have heard a rumour that the most successful female band of all time is coming to our shores. This is not just my opinion. Ask the Guinness Book of World Records. I can only be talking about one group, and it is, of course, the 80s pop sensation Banana Rama. And we are pleased to welcome on the phone one of the original members, the ever-ageless Karen Woodward. Thank you, Karen. Hello. Ever-ageless. That's well, very kind of you. <laughs> well, sweetie, you're looking fantastic, let me tell you. You just don't seem to age. Well, you might not say that if you were looking at me right now, but thank you. <laughs> Look, it's been three years since you last toured our shores. What can we expect from Banana Rama yeah. around this time? You know, we're still going to hear our old favourites, you know, Shy Boy, Cruel Summer, of course, the eternal icon, Venus. Um, we'll be doing some old favourites, uh, but we are, and um, we're going to put in some stuff we probably haven't performed in Australia before, and a couple of tracks probably from our new album that, that's coming out in April. Awesome. We have a new album out in April. Wouldn't, we, wouldn't want to come out and do exactly the same show as last time and try and sort of change it. Yeah, every so often. We're having a rehearsal this week to finalise what we're doing because we're off to the States this week. Um, so double jet lag. Off double jet lag. And then all the way back and then, out, and then out to Australia. Well, what a way so to finish be... off. <laughs> yeah. Yes, well, yeah. We're, so we, we've got our band that we use all the time from here. They're coming on the whole thing with us. That's so fantastic. So, I um, I really wanted to talk to you about the album that's coming out because we're really excited for that. I mean, it was 10 years ago when you released your last album, Viva. What's it like being back in the studio after such a really nice break? It wasn't really that much of a break. <laughs> it wasn't really that much of a break in that we've kind of popped in and out the studio. Over the last few years, we've been popping in and out the studio with no real plan to release just because most, most most of it will be done with Ian Masterson, who's fabulous yeah. and a really good friend, and we just love working with him, and, and it's not really like work at all. Yeah. It's not like... Just, we have a, a great time with him. It's all very comfortable, and we try things, and we laugh at each other and think, <laughs> that's ridiculous, don't be so stupid. But it, <laughs> we can go in and try different types of music, and, and actually... For me, this album is like a collection of songs because we've gone through phases of wanting to do. In, this is in the last few years. We've wanted to do, oh, let's make a country album. Let's make a <laughs> disco album. Let's make, let's use all the band and make a really rocky album. Let's do, so it sounds great live. And, you know, all these things sort of transform into various songs. What they are is they're all pop songs and they're all Banana Armour songs, you know, because we very much write songs we want to sing. And that's exactly um, what we want to hear. Been, we want to hear Banana Rama. Yeah. Well, like I sort of think whatever we do sounds like us. It doesn't really matter what style it's in. It just sounds like us, doesn't it? That is very <laughs> true. <laughs> no, I mean, it's like when yeah. you're saying it's 10 years, there's been such a difference in the music industry. That, you know, So what is influencing you, this album? You've, you mentioned a bit of country. So, so what other artists influence you? Um, I, I don't think we're influenced by artists. We just, you know, we might have a sort of kitchen disco and listen to whatever we happen to listen to. And quite often we have a sing-song in the kitchen with Sarah's daughter, Alice, who is obviously much younger, and she'll play stuff and you think, oh, God, that's great. I don't think we're influenced by any particular artist. I think we might be influenced by a vibe or a sound. Or I mean, we just sit down with, with our producer. He sort of rustles things up and then we say, well, can you make it sound slightly different? And uh, I don't know, it just sort of works. It's just a sort of ongoing process for us. Well, you did mention Sarah just so, then, so you're coming back with Sarah. You guys have been friends since yeah. the 70s. What's the secret to such a successful friendship, both professionally and personally? I think we're exactly the same where it matters, which is things like our humour and what we like doing. But we're very different as well. So we sort of deal with different aspects of stuff and we maybe we balance each other out. I always think we sort of somehow balance each other out and make one whole person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well you yeah. I'm, I'm quite I'm quite laid back and, and Sarah's really impatient and then you know, there are other there are other things. I think it just kinda works. I yep. don't know. We we enjoy spending time with each other so and we have a laugh, most most importantly. That is most important. Lot. And you're, so that, you're, you're for a yin to her yang. relationship, that's what you need to... Yes, we're yin and yang. Well, I would love to know how you, you kind of created this this awesome uh, rock-solid front that other divas didn't quite match. I mean, when you, when you came to a 
to a gig, you didn't have an entourage of makeup artists and hairstylists and pamperers. You seem to just kind of roll out of bed and slay. Is is that still the banana rama of today? It takes a bit longer, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But you were very famously about coming out of your dungarees and, you know, off you went. There was no stopping you. I mean, that you know, in those days, stylists weren't around and I don't think that was the dumb thing. I mean, we were always very do-it-yourself. Some of our stuff was homemade, some of our stuff, you know, I mean, all of it was what we wanted to wear. And I think in some ways we've always been more comfortable doing that sort of thing ourselves. I mean, we've locked makeup artists and hairdressers out of the room because you just think, oh, God, you're just poking and prodding and poking and prodding. I'd rather do it myself. You know, I think, um, you know, I'd like to spend as little time doing that sort of thing as possible. And the minute you get, I mean, I've had some, worked with some incredible makeup artists and hairdressers and stylists, to be honest. But it's all, it's not really the side of the thing that I want to do. I, I mean, if there's one thing I loathe, it's a photo shoot. And... and being dressed up and thing, I just want to put on some stuff and do my own hair and makeup and go. It's just quicker and easier, and you know, should be able to do it after this long. <laughs> oh, I mean, and like you saying that, you know, you, you never turned up. You guys were just out ready to perform, but I mean, the media got a bit hard on you guys for that, thinking you could be very standoffish. You were a bit abrupt. They, you know, they really hammered you guys there for a while. Yeah, that was a while, and and again, you know, I don't, I'm not sure they would have said that to a boy band it would have just been rock and roll yes i think because you sort of girls and and having a very sort of strong idea of what you want to do you know you sort of you get termed as being awkward or and it's not so much now i don't think but it was maybe back then um i think it's it's awful to say but i think it's always been harder for girls and and i think mm. it probably always will be about how you perceive i mean if you start if, you, if you're having fun, they think you're some sort of bubbly airhead. If you're, you know, dressed in a tight dress, they think you're this. If you're, if you're in baggy clothes, they think you're that. Yeah. Why can't you just, you know, it's, I, I think you get judged a lot more. I think girls get judged a lot more. Oh, the rumours were, I mean, you girls took them all to town. I mean, it, you, there was talk that, you know, Def Leppard used to drink these guys under the table. You held your own. Yeah, we had a we we had a moment where we did. Yeah, <laughs> what we've always held our own, but that's just a nat- that's just a natural thing for us. It's not like we thought about it. I mean, you know, Sarah and I have managed ourselves for quite a lot of our career, and even when we had managers, we wouldn't listen to what they said. So <laughs> it seems pointless, really. Um, so we've always sort of, for better or worse, decided what we're going to do. So. Um, you may sort of think, oh, you should have let, should have done this. And there are moments where I think, God, we really should have done that or that. But we didn't. And we've always been true to ourselves with no compromises. So if we've missed out on stuff through not listening to other people or if we've done stupid stuff, we've only got ourselves to blame. <laughs> <laughs> Which, is, you know, we've, we've certainly directed everything we've done. Well, you've done it with beautiful style and grace, let me tell you that. Oh, well, thank you. Not always beautiful style, <laughs> but I'd like to think we've improved. Well, I, I love it. Look, the rumour mill here in Australia is going into overload. Conveniently, your final show in February the 28th at the Gold Coast Star Casino is just two days before our 2019 Sydney Gay and Mardi Gras party. Karen, are we going to see Banana Rama perform this year? I Silence. No, because we have, well, we have to get that because we're making... Um, a video. We've got to make a video. Oh, well, as you know, we uh, have our Mardi Gras here, so we all go into a rumour meal. Who's in the country? Who's going to be? You know, and we were, we've already started. You know, Banana Rama, yay! Yeah. <laughs> well, if we were, I wasn't going wasn't to tell you, was I? Well, no, I was, um, I was hoping for the scoop. A, we, <laughs> I mean, we do quite we do quite a few pride events and stuff around the world, and absolutely love them. Obviously, we've got to thank the lesbian gay community for sort of sticking with us for years and oh to the joy of joys when you see the front five rows <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> doing all the routines it fills my heart with joy well, every time i can tell you there'll be a 50 year old man in me standing up the front there singing off every word don't you worry <laughs> oh excellent i can't wait 
You will be joined on stage by other 80s iconics Tiffany as well as German diva Amber and you can catch Banana Rama touring Australia from February 17th to February 29th thanks to Frontier Touring and Arena Touring. Tickets and tour details are available from Ticketmaster. Karen, thank you so much for your time this morning and having such an honest chat with us. Thank you. I'm, I find it difficult not to be. Well, <laughs> thank you so much. We can't wait to hear all your new album and see you on stage. Karen Banana Rama, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Wake up with Tom and Mikey, Thursdays for breakfast on Joy. Tune in to 94.9 in Melbourne. Stream live at joy.org.au or download the Joy app. Find all our podcasts at tomandmikey.com. Subscribe on iTunes or wherever you get podcasts. Joy Podcasts, where you want them, when you want them.